personal notice. Danger is my stock and trade. If the job's too tough for you to handle, you've got a job for me. George Valentine. Write full details. Yes, it's Let George Do It. Brought to you by Preem. P-R-E-A-M. The new miracle way to cream your coffee. We'll begin tonight's transcribed adventure of George Valentine in a moment, but first... Oh, the new way to cream it is to hurry that gets cream. That's cream with a capital P. Over all other products for creaming your coffee, you'll prefer Preem in instant powdered form. P-R-E-A-M. Here's why. First, Preem has a rich, delicious flavor because it's made entirely from fresh, sweet cream and other milk products. Yet when you use Preem in your coffee, every cup contains only about half as many calories as if you use coffee cream. And then Preem is wonderfully convenient. It never sours, never turns. Keeps indefinitely while sealed. Open for everyday use, Preem stays fresh tasting to the last spoonful on your kitchen shelf or in your refrigerator. And last but not least, this new dairy miracle actually saves you more than one-third the cost of coffee cream. Tomorrow, start serving Preem whenever you serve coffee. P-R-E-A-M. The new way to cream it is to preem it. Get free with a capital P. And now, tonight's adventure of George Valentine, the ghost of Ireland Betty. Dear Mr. Valentine. Valentine? Dear Mr. Valentine, I live in an enormous rambling house built like an Italian villa. Well, that's funny. What else did she write? What was the rest of it? What? What? Crying. It's crying, that's what it is. It's crying. I know it is. It's crying. That's what... Where is it? It's crying. I know it's crying. I know it. Oh, Christine. Oh, for heaven's sake. Where are you going in such a hurry? Daddy, I'm, I'm sorry, but I just... Uh... Listen, this... Yes, my dear. Oh, Christine, you've had such a long trip. I thought you were going to lie down and rest a while. Uh, did you hear something, my dear? No. No, I didn't hear anything. Mr. Valentine, who is he? Why were you writing him a letter, Miss Dowdy, about the house? Here, it's a letter you didn't finish. Oh, oh, that. But I did finish another one. That one blotted. Yes, I've already written Mr. Valentine. He's... Just a friend of mine. Oh. It's lonely here, and I thought perhaps he might like to call on me. Now you run along and get your rest. There's nothing to be afraid of in the old place. You may hear a shutter banging once in a while, but... But mm, that's all. That's absolutely all. All right, Miss Dowdy. Sorry my imagination seems to... I'm sorry I bothered you. Daddy, I got the letter you wrote to me, all right, but... Please, please don't talk so loud, Mr. Valentine. Uh, in here, Miss Brooks. Of course. Oh, what a lovely old room. Uh, Christine is asleep. I don't want to disturb her. Uh, that's uh, Christine O'Casey? Yes, she just got here, you know, from Canada. She's been there since before her aunt's death, several months ago. Won't you sit down? Thanks, Miss Dowdy, but I'm not sure we're staying. Oh, but I wrote you yes, that... Yes, you wrote in your letter that you wanted a man investigated, a Professor E.L. Gifford from Denver. Yes, that's right, Professor Gifford. You sounded as though you wanted us to, um, well, to get something on him. Oh, now, you must understand And that... yet, as I gather, all you suspect about this Professor Gifford is that he's liable to buy this house. Yes, yes, that's just it. 
You see, Mr. Eustace, the real estate man, has received this offer from Denver. Yes, and... I know. I've already talked to Mr. Eustace. And I find he's also the executor of estate for one Miss Betty O'Casey, who used to own the house. Yes, for Betty, the one who died. Mm -hmm. That's Christine's aunt. And I find you don't even have anything to do with the sale of this house, Miss Dowdy. You don't even own it, any part of it. No, no, I don't. But I was Betty O'Casey's companion for more than 20 years, Mr. Valentine. Sure, I understand. She left you pretty well taken care of, right? Only the house went to the principal beneficiary, Christine, her relative. And it's Christine's desire to sell, according to Mr. Eustace. That's why she's here, to speed up a sale, any sale. Mm-hmm. Okay, but Miss Dowdy, what do you have against this professor? Why shouldn't he buy the house? Why should you want to hire me to interfere with any possible sale? The professor, he's not the right type. Not the right type? Yes. Well, if the house is Christine's, well, what does she say? Haven't you talked to her about it? Christine isn't... Well, she's not sympathetic to the house. What? She's not sympathetic. She doesn't understand. She's young and cynical. And this isn't just a usual house, Mr. Valentine. Well, I grant you it's pretty old, valuable maybe, but not so easy to get rid of. We looked all over for this house years ago. It was just what Ireland Betty wanted. Oh, it made her so happy. Oh, wait a minute. Who? Uh, Betty O'Casey. Ireland Betty. Oh, I know. It does make her sound rather like an apple woman, but it was a nickname. Many people called her that. Ireland Betty. Excuse me, but it sounds more to me like the name of a racehorse. Oh, she would have loved to hear you say that. She owned some horses once. No. She was so enthusiastic, so interested in... in everything. And she was no more recently Irish than I am. But she called herself second cousin to a leprechaun. <laughs> sounds like quite a woman. A pixie, Miss Brooks, not a woman. Oh, not at all like her niece. A little modern realist. The unbeliever. Unbeliever in what, Miss Dowdy? Leprechaun? Well, unbeliever in this house, for one thing. Well, you'll have to be more specific. What is there about this place, Miss Dowdy, that you don't want it sold? Because that is the idea, isn't it? You don't want anyone else living here. Why? Mr. Valentine, Ireland, Betty, and I became great believers in... Well, she looked all over to find this house. Because this house was supposed to have... I'm sorry, Mr. Valentine, that I've troubled you. You're too young yourself. And a good deal more honest than I thought you would be. What? Now, wait a minute. Oh, uh, oh. Uh, excuse me. Uh, uh, sorry. Uh, wait a minute. How on earth did you get in here? With a key, naturally. Greetings, my dear Miss Dowdy. You haven't changed a bit. Where did you get a... Oh, let go of my hand. Oh, this, it won't bite you. Tape measures. See if there's space for a piano in the parlor. Besides my recording instrument. Uh, and... Excuse me, Miss Dowdy, but is this, uh, is this the guy? The guy? Professor Gifford. Yes, um, Mr. Valentine. Miss Brooks. Tom. How do you do? Mr. Valentine was just leaving. No. No. What? No. No, I wasn't going anywhere. I was just going to say I'd like to uh, stick around for a while. Oh, Mr. Valentine. But of course, you can help me, uh, Hold one end of the tape measure, Mr. Valentine. Mm -hmm. Come along. I am sorry I intruded, Miss Dowdy. But I was to meet Eustace here. He gave me the key. Oh, Eustace. Mr. Eustace. Uh, do come along, Mr. Valentine. Right. <clears throat> Just us and an almost empty piece of real estate, Professor Gifford. What's your business, Professor? My own happiness, Mr. Valentine. What's yours? No, what I meant was, what are you a professor of? Nothing. Huh? The sort of nothing that is something. The sort of something that is nothing until it is seen or heard by man. Until man like myself is willing to admit that he sees what he can't understand, what no one understands. Ah, uh, huh? That makes as much sense as a scramble jigsaw puzzle. Oh, it's quite simple. I'm a student of psychic research. Supernatural being. Oh, brother, no, not that. Only fools laugh, Mr. Valentine. Okay, I'm not laughing. You, uh, believe in ghosts, huh? So does Miss Doughty. So did Ireland Betty. Bless her soul. 
so does this house. Yes, most of all, this house. So that's why you're buying it. Place is infested with ghosts, eh? <laughs> so far. Not every house has a ghost, you know, any more than it has good plumbing. But that's why Betty bought it originally. Been a ghost reported off and on the past hundred years. Hmm. Shall we rejoin the ladies? Yeah, yeah, I I'm getting scared. I almost had this house once before, Valentine. I'll and Betty rather had her cap set for me. She did not. Yes, I would have had it for nothing then, if it hadn't been for her bodyguard here. Will you throw him out of here, or do I have to? No sense of humor, Mr. Dowdy. All right, mister. Because it's true. I'll and Betty pursued me like the beautiful banshee that she was. She came galloping at me like... Yeah, I, I said never mind. Mr. Valentine. And as for you, Miss Dowdy... No, no, please, be quiet. Listen. <gasps> huh? But, Miss Dowdy, but... George. Don't move anyone. That's what it sounds like. I've never known. You always want Yes. That's what it is. Oh, before. come on. Cut it out, both of you. <laughs> sure. Sure, it's crying, all right, but that's not any ghost. Miss Dowdy, where are you? Mr. Houston, that's his voice. Get down here, somebody, will you? Come help me. It's Christine. <laughs> You're all right yes. now, Christine. I found her just lying there on the stone outside her aunt's window. There in the sunken garden, Mr. Yes, that's right. Whimpering, almost unconscious. She'd had a terrible fall. I was coming up by the side entrance, you see. And what, I... uh, what makes you think she just had a fall? Christine, what happened? Can you tell me? Did you fall? No. No, I didn't. I... Well, then tell us. What was it? I don't know what happened, Miss Dowdy. Oh, now, look here. But George, he's just woozy. Let her rest. Did you see the ghost, Christine? Oh, Professor, for the love of my... No, no, I didn't. I didn't. I tell you, there's no such thing as ghosts. It's all your imagination. I saw the ghost once myself. The night your aunt died. Perhaps even she saw it. Over the lawn by the summer house. What are you talking about? Who saw what when? I wasn't here. You never told me. The ghost. Nothing to upset yourself over. And I'm sure Miss Dowdy, unless she cares to lie, will admit that she, too, saw... Well, what if I did? What if I did see it? It doesn't have anything to do with this. It doesn't. It doesn't, Miss Dowdy. Oh, no. right. down like nine cents, aren't they? And all knocked down by a ghost. All right, now, come on. Come on, somebody. I and think tell... uh, she just noticed where you were found, Christine. What? The stone floor outside your aunt's window, Christine. Exactly where you were. That's where your aunt fell. Where she died. The night that... that we saw the ghost. <laughs> Coincidence, I suppose. That's all. <laughs> Sure as you enjoy good coffee, you'll enjoy coffee creams with cream. P-R-E-A-M. For this new 100% dairy product in convenient powdered form has a truly delicious flavor. And cream is thrifty. Saves over one-third on coffee cream costs. No wonder you'll prefer cream to all other coffee creaming products. You'll be delighted to find cream has many other uses, too. It's perfect for sauces, smooth, luscious gravies, and richer, creamier soup. If you'd like to discover how cream can help you serve tastier and more economical meals, you'll want to send for the wonderful new cream recipe booklet we're offering you absolutely free. This brand new collection of cream recipes includes easier, quicker, surer ways to make such family favorites as souffles, dressing, shortcakes, plus tested time-saving recipes for delectable new desserts. For your free Preem booklet, just drop a card or a letter with your name and address to Preem Test Kitchen, 
Box 959G, Columbus 16, Ohio. Bream Test Kitchen, Box 959G, Columbus 16, Ohio. Don't miss this exciting offer. Send for your free copy of the new Prime Recipe Collection right away. And now, back to George Valentine. Look. Don't you hear? Miss Brooks, where are you? Where did you go? I am, Christine. Here I am. I, I just went back to the kitchen to get some ice. What's the matter? Shh, be quiet. Stop crying. Listen, this. There's my imagination at work. Oh, here, now lie down again. Put this on your forehead. My forehead's all right. The doctor said he'd be out later to take yeah, a look yeah, at it. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. You've been pretty sick up in Canada, haven't you? Yes, and I'm tired, and I'm... My aunt had asthma, you know. Did she? But that wasn't what she died of, was it? Well, sort of. That's what the doctor wrote me. I wasn't here, you know. We'd been having a fight, and she had guests for the weekend, so I just got in my car and drove off. See that window there? Mm -hmm. French doors. There's no guardrail outside it. And he thought she must have opened the doors trying to get more air. She was having one of her attacks. And, well, she fell to the stone below. They found her the next morning. Only now these people talk about a ghost. You don't suppose she opened the window and, and saw it up in itself? Stop it! Not you, too. How did you get hurt? Did you fall out of the window, too? No. I was out there and I tripped and fell. Really? That's all, all right. All right. But why don't you want to talk about it to the others? What is it about this house that upsets you so? Everything about it in this book, I hate it. I've always hated it. My aunt and I used to fight about it. She was so wonderful. But would she take up with those fads, those crazy people, those crazy superstitions? That awful Professor Gifford that you went chasing after trying to impress. All this talk about ectoplasm and manifestations and... You blame me? Christina, I don't believe in such things any more than you do. But I would blame you if you kept too much to yourself. If you attributed certain things to your own imagination just because you've been sick and then tired and upset... What do you mean? I mean what you heard when I was still in the kitchen. I mean why you've come back here and, and what you may have seen and what you suspect about these people, about your aunt's death. I don't really know. Is Mr. Valentine going to stay here? Yes, Christine. Where is he now? He'll be close. He'll be right here, won't he? Yes, of course. He's just... just chatting with Miss Dowdy. She's probably showing him around the place. <laughs> Now, Mr. Eustace, suppose you tell me the truth about what you saw that night. Well, I... Well, my room was third story. I'd been reading in bed. There'd been a good deal of talk at dinner about the... the ghost. It being the proper time of year for appearance and all. Mm -hmm. Naturally, I tried to be tolerant, but... Well, perhaps I did watch a little. You see, it's supposed to appear just momentarily out back by the summer house, moving slowly and then sort of floating away. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, did it? Well, for heaven's sake, it didn't actually... I didn't hear anything, and certainly whatever it was had no substance, no body. Naturally, the next morning I didn't say anything. Why should I? An effect of all the talk, a, a trick of the imagination. Of course, you'd have been laughed at. You don't believe in ghosts. Well, I do, Mr. Eustace. What? I believe in the kind of ghost that can be tricked up by a human being. And maybe it's being tricked up again. George. I sneaked out one of Christine's shoes. See? The heel here is torn off. Yeah. Now, that's where she fell. Mm -hmm. Stone floor of the sunken garden beneath the overhang there. Darn. George, that's uh, Loose shutter, that's all. Stone steps here have mud on the side. Roses have been watered. And mud on Christine's shoes. But if she came down here, she would have been on the path. Hold it, hold it. Yeah, here we are. 
I can feel the footprint where she stepped off the path by the top of the step. See? Oh, it's the one, all right. Yeah. And that must have been how she tripped us out. Oh, that... Yeah, they can't hear us, Angel, but they will if we go back, so... Well, it's a lovely place, all right. They'll run down, maybe, but if the garden's out here, we're fixed up. I'm sure they... Look here. Look here. Look out. Someone push the shutter, I almost... Sure. Sure, that's what it was we heard. I'm all right, George. You go on. Get up there. Find out... Shh, 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 quiet. But, George, from above, it's so dark. I look just like Christine. That must have been meant for... I'd never find anybody up there. There's nobody in this house but ghosts, didn't you know? Well, Angel, we're going to catch one before the ghost succeeds at murder. <laughs> Valentine, I guess that's where I lost my heel, where I tripped only... Yeah, I... you were uh, coming along the path, Christine. You stepped off it, tripped, and rolled down the stone steps. Yes. You were out here walking with a summer house, but you didn't want anybody to know. Let's see, it was uh, Eustace who found you. What happened? You see him coming and run for the house? Yes, that's right. I ran. Only why'd you step off the path? Well, I... well, there was a shovel or a rake or something lying across the path. Oh, I get it. Only it's not there now. I didn't look. Mr. Valentine, I did suspect something for a long time. But I didn't know what I was looking for or why. Or, or whether you could find anything back here that would show you how the ghost worked that night your aunt died. That's what I mean. A whimpering, crying ghost. A thing with no substance that's supposed to appear and then float away. Aunt Betty told me where she expected to see it. Mr. Valentine! Well, listen to that. Rising to the bait already. Mr. Go. Here, here, here. Right in front of you, Miss Daddy. Oh, I've got to see you alone. I've got to. Anything you have to say, you can say right in front of her. Only say it fast. It's about the ghost. I know it's about the ghost. Oh, it was only to impress Gifford. You've got to realize that. Yeah, it wasn't to scare anybody, if that's what you're trying to say. I'm smart enough to figure that Ireland Betty didn't fall from her window out of fright on seeing the ghost. She wasn't the type. So if it was you who played the ghost that night, lady... No, no, that's not what I'm trying to say. It was Ireland Betty... It was she herself who did it. What? Miss Dowdy. Yes, she did. Oh, I know it sounds crazy, but she had to. She'd never been able to locate the ghost in the house. And she had bragged. And she didn't want Professor Gifford to be disappointed. That's why I didn't want him to get the house. He might have found out. Hey, now, slow down. All you're claiming is there isn't any ghost, is that it? There never has been one in this house. Only why, then? Mr. Valentine, listen to me. If Betty was out here instead of in her room, and you think she was murdered... Of course, I know. She died before she ever got back to her room, and she was probably running just like Christine here was. Yes. Yes, only if that's the case, It's then... okay. It's okay. I'll take care of everything. Mr. Valentine. Come on, Christine. Head back to the house. See you later, Miss Daddy. Well, the whole thing's pretty simple, I guess, isn't it? I don't understand at all any of it. Don't you? You understand a good deal about the ghost. But Aunt Betty told me... To... Sure. I was supposed to look... But nobody says they've ever heard it, except you. The whimpering, the crying. Christine, were you here in the garden that night with your aunt? Is that when you thought you heard the crying? No. No, I've really heard it. Someone else... Were you hiding out here? Did you pretend to leave for Canada and then come back and hide and scare? Oh, sure, you don't believe in ghosts. You knew the little old pixie would be playing the part. So she was scared and ran, just like you did, down the path. Mr. Valentine, stop it. You don't understand. What's the matter? You afraid to walk down this path? Afraid you'll trip on something again? A rake that you might see when you're running, only it's so dark you can't even see your hand in front of your face? No, it wasn't a rake. I don't know what it was. I know what it was, young lady. It wasn't anything. Yes, it was. You're mixing me up. I, I know there was. Christine, I said some crimes are simple. They are after they've happened. Because a guilty conscience does terrible, horrible things. Like stumbling over something that isn't even there. Except a memory. Or what was there when you made your old aunt fall? A rake? A string? A wire? No. No, I didn't do it. I didn't. Then come on. Walk. Perfect accident. Ha! Not so perfect a few months after, is it? When you get so scared, you get sick, so guilty, you even try to kill someone else. Nervous little old Miss Dowdy because she's begun to be suspicious. I didn't. I didn't push that shutter. Sure, go on, say it. Fill me in. But I know it was you, all right, sister. You were the only one who thought Miss Dowdy was out walking with me. Nobody would have tried to kill Brooksy, but just by accident, Brooksy had told you that Dowdy and I were walking together. Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Listen. 
never believed it. They all did, but I never believed it. Cry. What? I don't hear anything. Yes, you can. Whimpering, a woman crying. If it's not a real person, one of those others. It has to be the ghost. The ghost of the house. There. Yeah. Yeah, you do hear something, don't you, Christine? You're the only one who does. The unbeliever. And yet the only one who's heard anything all evening. Or ever. But hasn't it occurred to you? There never was a ghost in this house until you made one. The ghost of Ireland Betty. <laughs> You know, there's something about crisp, tangy autumn weather that makes coffee time more enjoyable than ever. And what better time than now to discover cream? P-R-E-A-M. The delicious new way to cream coffee. In instant powdered form, cream is made from fresh, sweet cream milk products and nothing else. Naturally, it has a rich, delicious flavor. What's more, cream is so convenient, so economical... You'll prefer it to all other products for creaming your coffee. You see, Preem never sours, never turns. Sealed, Preem keeps indefinitely. Open for regular use, Preem stays fresh tasting to the last spoonful on your kitchen shelf or in your refrigerator. Budget-wise, Preem saves more than one-third the cost of coffee cream. And then, something every calorie counter should know. When you use Preem in your coffee, every cup, contains only about half as many calories as if you used coffee cream. So try Preem in your coffee. P-R-E-A-M. The new way to cream it is to preem it. Well, Brooksy, that's what's known as getting a confession the hard way. Oh, the poor girl's an absolute wreck. Poor girl. She killed her aunt, didn't she? <laughs> Ireland Betty. Second cousin to a leprechaun. Oh, yeah. There's someone I'd like to have known. Yeah, the Irish. Believe in anything. Oh, Brooksy, hmm? there is one little item. You know, when I told you to go back in the house there, hmm. when I asked you to make some noises to help me get the story out of the girl? What? Well, I never made any noises. Huh? Oh, well, I mean, first there was the police on the phone, and then Mr. Eustace kept following me around. I... I mean, you didn't think I did, did you? You didn't hear anything. Did you? Of uh, whimpering or crying? Uh, <clears throat> no, Angel. No, of course not. Uh, no, I didn't hear anything. It was just, uh, just in the girl's imagination, that's all. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> Tonight's adventure of George Valentine has been brought to you transcribed by Preem, the new dairy miracle in instant powdered form. Try it. You'll prefer it to all other products for creaming your coffee. For Preem is the most delicious, convenient, thrifty way to cream your coffee ever discovered. Yes, the new way to cream it is to preem it. Let George do it stars Olin Soleil as George, and tonight Lillian Byeth appeared as Brooksy. Let George Do It is written by David Victor and Jackson Gillis and directed by J.C. Lewis. Also heard in tonight's cast were Gene Bates as Christine, Florence Ravenall as Dowdy, Benny Rubin as Gifford, and Howard Culver as Eustace. The music was composed and presented by George Wright. Tonight's performance concludes this current series. We hope you have enjoyed it. Your announcer has been George Crowell. <laughs>